guys, what's going on? Welcome to a brand new video. I hope you're all doing well. I've seen in the comments section of my last video people asking what happened to my arm. Also commenting on my tan lines. These two things kind of go hand in hand. Someone also said that I should do a story time video. I haven't done a story time video in a while. I think the last story time video I did was maybe the catfish one. That was, that was peak. But anyway, let's do another story time video. So, what happened to my arm? I also injured my back, and I've also injured my leg, and I've also injured my side. My side slightly, my side isn't too bad, but my leg feels quite bruised, and my muscle is quite painful, and my arm, that's definitely been affected. It's quite swollen as well. It's gone down a bit now. This is quite a few days after the accident, and my back's still irritating me a bit. But anyway, what happened? How did I injure myself? I will tell you. I'm gonna tell you two stories actually, two accidents, because one of them is quite funny. I didn't really injure myself in the first one, but I think it's a funny story. You guys might like it. So this first accident I want to discuss, this is quite a minor one, but it's hilarious. For those of you who don't know, I'm training for a 100 mile ride at the end of this month, the 29th. And please guys, donate if you can, it helps a lot. I'm trying to hit a target, I'm representing an epilepsy charity. For those of you who don't know, I suffer with epilepsy myself. So it's quite something that's close to my heart. And if you can afford to donate, and the link will be in the description, it's a virgin giving page. Please donate as much as you can. So I was training and I discovered this new route, these new country lanes. I love cycling down country lanes because they're more peaceful. You don't have to worry about traffic, etc, etc, and you get quite a nice view. So it's a win-win situation. Recently I've installed new pedals and I've bought myself some new shoes, some specialized torch ones. And at the bottom of these shoes there are something called cleats. And what happens is they actually clip into the pedal so you're fixed to the pedal. Basically the idea is that it's more efficient power distribution and your legs and your feet don't move as much so you're always attached to the pedal in the right position for again a more efficient power distribution and a consistent kind of pace and speed etc 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 so it's a bit tricky to unclip to clip and unclip out of the pedals especially when you're first getting used to wearing cleats and it wasn't that long ago that I just purchased these and I'm still even getting used to them to this day anyway I was cycling down this country lane and there's like a junction like a T junction if you imagine I'm coming down this road and what I can see is a road on the left so I'm on that T coming upwards and anyway coming directly opposite me is a tractor a farmer and a herd of sheep and then I see in the distance he's kind of making these hand signals I think he's telling traffic to stop on the left on the road that I can see and cars to slow down behind him he's got a sheep in front of him and then he looks at me and he he does this and I'm a bit confused at first I'm thinking is he telling me to stop or is he telling me to move over to the left so I, I reduce my speed I move over to the left I haven't completely stopped because I can't find a safe place to stop and I kind of want to get out of the way of the sheep so my idea was to maybe turn left down that road so they've got more room but anyway the sheep kept moving and I was getting closer to them and then I pulled over onto the left around the corner that stretched around the road that I could see on the left and my road that I was coming from so I I pull onto this little kind of section onto the left and there's a little patch of grass. I unclip my pedal and the sheep at this point, they've had like a fit. They're running around in circles. I'm a bit shaken up. The farmer, you can see he's pissed off. He's like, oh, for God's sake, this ride has just ruined it. He's trying to gather his sheep. And anyway, I unclip and my foot goes into some grass, but then it sinks even more. And then I fall into this hole, into some bushes, into a pile of stinging nettles. And I just drop. It just happened like so quick. And I'm just like, bang, and I just fall into like a massive hole because all this grass and these bushes and stinging nettles are covering up this massive ditch. And I just go. <laughs> and then there was this old woman in a car waiting to turn right. And you know, old people, they're always so concerned. They don't find the humour and things, so she's just shocked in the car like, oh, bloody hell, you know, is he alright, is he alright? I get up and I start laughing and the farmer's like proper concerned as well. He's simultaneously trying to gather his sheep, but he's also concerned because I've just fell and he's wondering if I've hurt myself. I get up, I'm like, nah, 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 it's good. And he's like, you sure, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, it's good. And there's a guy in a tractor behind and he's just laughing. And then there's a guy in a van with his mate, like two cars behind and they're smiling and chuckling to themselves. And I'm thinking, oh God, what an embarrassment. What a fool I've just made of myself. I was like proper dirty and this thing 
hanging nettles punctured through my cycling jersey. So my back was stinging. Oh my days. Fell onto my side and my back in the bush. I just went bang. And yo, I swear, that training day, I carried on training because I wanted to get those miles in. But my gosh, the pain. The pain I was in for the rest of my training session. So that was quite a funny accident. Now to get on to how I actually damaged myself. So this was another standard day of training. I'm going to have to rant a bit and moan to the UK council here, the West Midlands council, because as you all know, the potholes, they're tragic. Roads are not well maintained these days. What do we pay tax for? What do we give our money to the government for? That's what I want to know. Roads are absolutely tragic. Now, being on a road bike, there's zero suspension. So there is no comfort. There is no comfort and it takes time to get used to. Also, I have really bad ulnar nerve problems, which means after all the cycling that I've been doing recently, it's damaged my ulnar nerve. Now, the ulnar nerve in my hand primarily affects my ring finger and my little finger, so it's completely numb. First, it started off in my left hand. My left hand healed, and now it's in my right, and I think it's because subconsciously, I was so worried about my left hand that I took off pressure from my left and put it onto my right to kind of make up for it, and now I've done damage to my right, but even and now like it's just not healing it's not healing at all and I've got potholes to blame for this because it's sending vibrations through the wheels through the frame, through the forks, right up to my handlebars, and my hands are like, and it's just, ah, oh, it's horrible, and I've tried to find solutions, you know, I've tried wearing gloves, body geometry gloves, whatever, not helping, in fact, what's made it better is not wearing gloves, even though the problem's still there, as soon as I stopped wearing gloves, the problem went from my left hand, however, the problem is still here on my right, and it's just getting worse, so I'm a bit stuck, but anyway, this is all down to potholes and bumpy roads, roads that are not well maintained, so, so anyway, how I fell, I was training again, a standard day of training in 28 degree heat, flies are just zooming into your face, they have no care in the world, you know, I'm eating moths, little insects, disgusting, this always happens when you're training. So I'm going down this road, it's another country lane, another road that I had recently discovered, so it's pretty new, and you go over like this little kind of hump, I wouldn't really say it's a hump, it's more of a block of squares, just bumps and you're like, like, uh. And then you finish coming off it and the side I was coming on I was approaching some residential houses and it kind of sloped up a bit quite a few potholes Anyway, I was standing up on my bike Sometimes I do that to get more momentum Especially when it's uphill just to push myself a bit more and get up the hill a bit quicker and work them calf and thigh muscles Anyway, so I was standing up went over a few potholes and I had an itch on my face and for some reason I decided that it would be a good idea to scratch my face while standing up which obviously meant I would have to take one hand off one of the grips. So, usually I'm alright with balance. I can ride with no handlebars, but if my bum's not in the seat, that's where the difficulty lays. But I didn't think, I had an itch. I went to scratch it. Didn't even question it. So I'm standing up. I took my left hand off. I went lost balance went over a pothole pothole shook me completely took away all hope all balance and next thing you know i was on the floor i was doing about 20 miles per hour as well really trying to pace it up this gradual slope and i'm just off my bike and then my helmet literally saved me so i'm clipped into my pedals the bike went kind of upwards towards the right which sent me towards the ground facing my left side and then my arm must have hit the ground first did this caused a lot of damage here it's still really tender and bruised then my back must have hit the ground then my side and then i don't even know how my leg got injured especially on the front of my thigh something must have hit it maybe it was my bike but as you can see i've got kind of a long straight scratch so maybe something on my bike maybe my pedal whatever hit my leg before completely unclipping or something and then to make matters worse the force of the fall sent my head just crashing towards the ground 
luckily guys, luckily I was wearing a helmet. I'm going to be honest with you, before I started seriously training for this event, whenever I went out on rides, especially when I had my afro, because I'd use it as an excuse not to wear a helmet because they wouldn't really fit properly, I would never wear one. Thank God I'm starting to wear helmets more regularly because my head just came crashing towards the ground and bang, if I was not wearing my helmet, I'd dread to think what would have happened. So I'm laying there in the ground, I've skidded, this is how I've like scraped my back, and I'm just in shock, you know when the adrenaline takes over, you don't really know what kind of damage you've done. Now, of course, being my luck, I didn't bring my phone with me on that day because all my jerseys with pockets were in the wash So I was training without any storage to put your phone in and I also wear cycling shorts They have no pockets. They're just skin tight and no pockets So I thought you know what I'll just go out and train without a phone guys never go out training without a phone Never go out training without water without a puncture repair kit anything that could be really useful I still don't even carry around a puncture repair kit myself. So it's a bit hypocritical But yeah, I was just laying in the ground I was like, what do I do? So you know when the adrenaline and everything takes over in your body, you're not sure what kind of damage is done. I was just thinking, have I broke anything? I'm stranded here in like a country lane approaching some residential houses. Not many people are going to see me unless I can actually make it to a door. Luckily, I didn't break anything. So I got up. I analysed the damage. I was in shock. I saw my arm first. I was like, oh no. It started to gradually bleed and bleed. I was like, fantastic. I was like, this is pretty bad. I got back on my bike anyway. Realised... But the front left handlebar, the hood, because on road bikes the handlebars are different, so it was something called the hood that had been bent. The metal had been bent inward towards my bike and I was shook. I didn't actually realise that until I got home and went out training the next day. My shifting had been affected so I couldn't change gears on the front. The front two, I couldn't change those. But I'll get on to this in a little bit because there's more to this story. But I got, got back on my bike and just wanted to get home. So just started pedalling home and as the adrenaline started to wore away, I realised that my back was stinging i kind of had a little peek through my shirt could see that i damaged my back and then i looked at my leg that looked damaged it felt really harsh as well and just bruised and attacked finally got home got my mom to clean it up with some tea tree oil i washed all like the dirt from the ground off and now it's healing all right but the following two days after the accident complete agony i couldn't even sleep the first night i had my girlfriend round and i was up all night literally because the pain and i could only lie on my right side we tried bandaging it up as well so i wouldn't lay on it or if i laid on it it would be okay but the heat the heat from the room and from outside it's just literally making everything so sticky that the heat would make it hurt even more make it sting so i took the bandage off and it started to get yellow and all infected but that night i just literally couldn't sleep to save my life it was horrible regarding my handlebar my front left hood having bent round i took it to you know what i'm not even going to name the shop and I'm not going to name names because I don't really want to affect anyone's career for the worst. I'm not about that. I'm not about that. But I took it somewhere. I took my bike somewhere. Somewhere that I usually go to. And somewhere that I have, you know, a certain amount of trust in. And have bought many products from. In fact. I even bought my bike from there. So I went there and I tried to get them to diagnose the problem and to see if they could fix the shifters. I was told that there was nothing they could really do about the bend in the metal and that regarding the shifters, they were just a bit jammed. The guy who I was speaking to had a look at my bike, just kind of forced the shifter down and said that it was actually working because he forced it so hard that it changed that he managed to give it some leeway to shift and he was like no that will have to do you know if, if this was me you know i'll just carry on it's that or buying a complete new stem and, and grip, whatever. And I was just thinking, well, you know, that's going to cost God knows how much, especially if I want a proper professional one or a carbon fibre one. You know, that's like a hundred plus pound and getting someone to fit it. I was just like, nah, this is peak. But, you know, I may do with it. And then the following day, actually being today, I went to that place yesterday. Today I decided that I wanted a second opinion. So I'm actually going to name them here because they deserve credit. I went to a shop 
shop this morning called Cycle Republic in Birmingham. Never been there before. They've got some beautiful bikes. I've only seen their store online. Went inside Cycle Republic. Even saw someone who I used to work with when I used to work at HMV. So it was quite a warm welcome from the start. I got sent to the mechanics area. The guy just saw I was queuing up, asked me what was up before even finishing his job, came straight over to me. I told him the situation, I was like, this metal's been bent here, I can't shift properly. He got a tool out, tell me why, he realigned it in two seconds. The guy knew instantly what had happened, realigned it, got it sorted. The other place told me that I would have to buy a new grip or a new handlebar set, like... Nah, this guy has just saved me so much money. It just shows lack of knowledge depending on who you go to and which companies take pride in who they hire. Guys, get second opinions on things. This doesn't even just go for bike. This goes for everything. If you go somewhere and you have a dodgy feeling about it or you feel as if you know it's going to cost you a lot of money and the response you've been given about your issue has some kind of lack of knowledge or is just a bit blah 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 and blase go somewhere else get a second opinion i am so glad i went to cycle republic today and got this problem solved the guy even said go for a ride it should help with your shifting and if not come back and i'll see what i can do since he realigned the metal it's helped my shifting as well so i can now change gear is almost as well as I could when I got the bike brand new and my my metal's been realigned so it's not affecting like my hand position because honestly positions on road bikes when you're sitting in the saddle for so long is so important so I'm glad it's fixed so yeah that's my story time that's a bit of three stories in one I'd say about these eventful things that have happened so far whilst training for my 100 mile ride on the 29th of this month, 29th of July guys. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's another story time video. I'll be back with a new video soon guys. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you've got notifications turned on as well. I know YouTube is sometimes a bit whack and doesn't always update you, even if you have the bell turned on, but you know, increase the chances guys, why not? See you soon, take care.